Hello Info Person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing new discoveries in regards to galactic evolution and in regards to relatively recent mysteries discovered by the James Webb Space Telescope, one of which we've discussed not so long ago and is sort of visible in this image right here, when essentially the scientists studying some of the data from the James Webb discovered six separate galaxies, and potentially even more, that grew a little bit too big and a little bit too massive not so long after the beginning of the universe. However, a relatively recent study that was actually studying something a little bit different discovered this really ancient galaxy with something protruding from its side. Something that might actually help us explain how these massive galaxies form and something that a lot of scientists did not consider before. In other words, we might have at least one potential resolution to the strange mystery of really massive early galaxies discovered by the James Webb. And a very important observation that provides evidence for how galaxies are able to grow so massive so fast. And spoiler alert, it involves a really large straw, a somewhat hypothetical straw used by various galaxies to suck in a lot of matter all at once. And that's pretty much what you see right here in this image created by the scientists whose paper you can find in a description. But obviously this is not a physical straw, Instead, this is more of a tendril-like formation that's part of something much larger, much more mysterious, and something that we still barely understand. The Cosmic Web. But I guess before we talk about this, let's briefly talk about what we know so far about galactic evolution and the growth of galaxies discovered to date. So prior to these discoveries from the James Webb, a typical explanation for how galaxies grow larger involved various galactic collisions. More collisions result in bigger galaxies, and bigger galaxies can collide with even more galaxies later on. But basically this was the main premise. You have two galaxies, or possibly even multiple galaxies, combined into something larger, producing something really big as a result. And there's actually quite a lot of evidence that all of this happened in the Milky Way as well. For example, the presence of multiple stellar streams around the galaxy definitively suggests that these are signs of ancient galactic remnants that our own Milky Way absorbed over time. And so many of them have been discovered in the last few years, obviously suggesting that the Milky Way swallowed a lot of galaxies, growing larger and larger in the process. And so the galactic formation models have always basically implied that most of the growth very likely comes from these collisions, with most of the gas that galaxies acquire coming from the galactic cluster the galaxy is in. And it of course all made sense up until, I guess, 2022-2023 when the James Webb Space Telescope started to reveal these relatively massive galaxies very early on, existing only hundreds of millions of years after the beginning of the universe. And some of them contain quite a lot of mass. For example, one of the galaxies here appears to be even more massive than the Milky Way, implying that if it basically grew through galactic collisions, it was converting approximately 100% of all of the gas into stars. And that's about 10 times more than a typical galaxy. One of the recent studies in the description below sort of talks about some of these discoveries in a little bit more detail. But the idea here is that these galaxies are just too massive to exist so early on. Obviously this is just six examples, and there are plenty of examples of galaxies that totally make sense and don't break any modern physics, but in this case things just don't really add up. And to scientists this implies one thing. The modern ideas behind galactic evolution are very likely not entirely correct. And no, it does not break the ideas of the Big Bang Theory or the expansion of the universe. As a matter of fact, quite the opposite. One of the videos in the description talks a little bit more about this, but this actually proves Big Bang and the expansion of the universe even further. But that's beside the point. The point here is that how did these galaxies get so chunky compared to everything else? There has to be another mechanism that allowed them to grow so fast. And at least one of these mechanisms might have been just discovered by this recent study or I guess not really discovered, more like confirmed. And it involves these very large galactic tendrils. Although technically speaking, tendrils are pretty common in a lot of other galaxies. Here's an example of the famous jellyfish galaxy that has these very unusual tendrils stretching from the sides all the way to the bottom of the image. But in this case, this is a result of a previous galactic passage where instead of a galactic collision, this galaxy experienced what's known as REM pressure, or something similar to what we experience where the wind blows into our face, with all these tendrils then stretching across, creating something very beautiful. But sometimes the scientists discover other types of tendrils. And here's actually one of the first such images created a few years ago, back in 2021. These tendrils show something different. This is the mysterious cosmic web. 
the peculiar formation that very likely stretches across the entire universe that seems to form a kind of a scaffolding across the entire universe where pretty much all of the galactic clusters, all of the galaxies and all of the gas seem to sort of flow through and seem to kind of interact in. In between these tendrils we have what's known as voids, galactic voids, much emptier, low density space. But it's the presence of these high density tendrils that's actually super interesting to us. Because for many years now the scientists have been speculating that this is what drives the galactic growth and it actually influences galactic formation, galactic composition, galactic growth and even galactic orientation across the entire universe. And it's also something that the universe had and something the universe has been doing since pretty much the beginning. The cosmic web was always there and it was always guiding, feeding and orienting various galactic objects, making them the way they are today. And for the first time ever we have the first proof that this is something that's been happening for a very long time, potentially allowing galaxies to grow really fast, much faster than they would grow through collisions. This is known as Ant Hill Galaxy, also known as 4C41.17, a galaxy discovered back in 1990 at a redshift of 3.8 and mostly visible in radio waves. This is a radio galaxy. Here's one of the first more advanced images of this particular galaxy. And so the light from this galaxy took approximately 12 billion years to reach us. Or essentially this galaxy existed when the universe was only about 1.8 billion years old. But the scientists behind this study decided to do something different. They used the radio satellites of ALMA Observatory, repositioning the satellites in such a way that it allowed them to see the stars with a much wider field of view but in low resolution. Which means that you can basically see larger structures up to the length of about half a million light years. Which means that this image now transformed into something a little bit more detailed but also started showing us the vicinity of this galaxy as well. And what they saw was a stream that was falling into the galaxies. Surprisingly, just as some of the theories predicted. And what's really intriguing is that this was a relatively cold stream of gas that would be really really difficult to observe by using any other telescope or any other observation. And when the scientists refer to cold gas, they actually refer to gas that's able to then form stars. A lot of previous computer simulations, including the ones I previously showed you, predicted that all of this gas should be probably warm and thus unsuitable for star forming regions or to provide galactic growth. But in this case, the detection was of cold gas, perfect for star formation and to make galaxy grow larger and more massive. With the stream itself, most likely made out of carbon, although at the moment it's unclear exactly what it contains. They're secretly hoping to find carbon monoxide, which has also been theorized previously. And this is not a small structure either. It's approximately 300,000 light years across, so basically several times larger than the Milky Way galaxy. It also seems to carry a huge amount of mass, very likely 70 billion solar masses with approximately 500 solar masses deposited into galaxy every single year. And according to the scientists behind this paper, this is actually enough to most likely double the mass of the galaxy in just 1 billion years, with the actual growth very likely much faster than galactic collisions. And that also means that if other galaxies are using something similar to grow by essentially using these unusual filamentary structures to kind of suck the matter into themselves, it sort of implies that galactic collisions are very likely not the major source of mass in various galaxies. But the cosmic web and specifically the tendrils inside the cosmic web that guide the matter across the universe most likely are. And since the density of matter in the early universe was also much higher and these streams were probably a lot more active and a lot more efficient, it might explain how some of these galaxies were able to become so massive so quick and how they were able to create so many stars all at once. Although obviously this is still just one discovery, one potential explanation, although a pretty important explanation, pointing at some of the previous mistakes in assuming that galaxies grow through collisions not so much through any other means, which does not seem to be the case here. And so it's pretty certain now that early galaxies billions of years ago were able to grow really massive through at least two different means. But chances are there might be other discoveries in the next few years that could provide even more explanations and more evidence for what exactly is going on here and of course explain galactic evolution early on compared to the galactic evolution in modern universe, which does seem to be kind of different. At the moment there are no similar examples of something like this happening anywhere near us. And though it's possible that it actually is happening, we're just not seeing it, mostly because all of this is very difficult to see, at the moment no galaxy near us seems to experience any similar effects. But I'm sure we'll discover more in the next few years 
as the scientists improve their techniques and as they're able to see even farther galaxies with even more detailed observations. And I mean, just a few years ago, this galaxy looked like this. In 2023, it looks like this. So I'm sure in the next 10 years, we'll have even better images with even more detail. And so, until more updates, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.